morning, Greater Latrobe. From the WCAT TV studio, I'm Ramaya Henderson alongside Tyler Nelson. Coming up in today's show, tomorrow is the last day to apply for membership in MUA for Theta. There is a job opportunity at the district available for students, and reporter Jacob Shawless highlighted a student athlete in today's student spotlight. All this and more on your WCAT TV news. Just a reminder, tomorrow is the last day to apply for the membership in MUA for Theta Math Honor Society. Any questions, please see Ms. Doyle in room C212. If you're a senior who is planning to major in education, you are eligible to apply for the GLEA scholarship. Look for application information on the Guidance Office scholarship site. Please see Mrs. Kubis if you have any questions. And be sure to turn in your application form to her in room H108 by the end of the day, Wednesday, April 26. In addition, many more scholarships are coming into the Guidance Office at this time. Please check the district scholarship page regularly. Rising juniors and rising seniors who plan to pursue an ed a career in aviation are encouraged to attend an upcoming informational meeting about the High School Aviation Academy offered through the Community College of Beaver County, which will be offered through Greater Lake Trobe next school year. Students who enroll in the program will attend classes virtually and earn up to 28 credits that can then be applied towards an associate's degree in professional pilot, air traffic control, or aerospace management. Families interested in learning more about the CCBC High School Aviation Academy should plan to attend one of the following informational sessions. Tonight from 6 to 6.30 p.m. or Friday, April 14th from 9 to 9.30 a.m. in the Center for Student Creativity. Let's get a check on the weather. We go to Gianna Lewis for your three-day forecast. Good morning, Wildcats. Today we have a high of 78 and a low of 50 with sunny skies. Tomorrow we once again see sunny skies with a high of 82 and a low of 49. Lastly, on Saturday, there's a 50% chance of rain with a high of 73 and a low of 56. That's your three-day forecast. Thanks and back to you. Thanks, Gianna. The 2023 Leadership Westmoreland Youth Academy is a five-day leadership development program offered June 19th through the 23rd. It is designed to introduce students to leadership concepts that provide interaction with local business, government, and community leaders. Participants should be sophomores, juniors, and seniors in September with a GPA of at least 2.5. To apply, students must complete the application and submit the requested documents before April 28th. Please email Mrs. Yetta for a link to the application. Are you interested in working for the Greater Latrobe School District this summer? Hours are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. This is a 10-week program, but hours are flexible if you already have previous plans. All applicants must have working papers and anyone 18 years of age or older must have clearances. Work includes general cleaning, moving furniture, light maintenance, and groundskeeping. The pay rate is $10.50 per hour. If you are interested, please see Mrs. Yetter for an application form and return it to the Facilities, Operations, and Planning Department at the Administrative Office or email your information to amy.sassos at glsd.us by Wednesday, May 3rd to be approved at the May 17th school board meeting. We'll be back after this message. Calling all upcoming juniors and seniors, it is time again to sign up for next year's Link Crew. Link Crew is a peer mentoring and high school transition program that helps freshmen feel welcome and comfortable during their first year of high school. If you are interested in applying to being a Link Leader, please check your school email for the link to the online application. The high school weight room is open for all students to lift after school on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 3 to 5, beginning today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Mrs. Fry in A4. We go to Richard Hillwick for the Wildcat Sports Report. Good morning, Wildcats. Today the baseball team travels to Altoona to battle Altoona area at 3. The girls lacrosse team takes on Winchester Thurston at 7.30 here at Rossi Field. And the boys volleyball team takes on the Gateway Gators tonight at the Wildcat Den at 7.30. That's all for Wildcat Sports. Now here is Joe Pletty with National Sports. Hey Wildcats, in sports your Penguins lost to the Chicago Blackhawks 5-2 despite the Blackhawks being in last place in the entire league at the time. This loss has basically eliminated the Pens from the playoffs. However, however, they will play one final game on the season versus Columbus Blue Jackets tonight at 7. In the MLB, the Pirates are off to a solid start, winning by a score of 7-4 to four versus the defending World Series champs off, the, off a G1 Bay home run in the ninth inning. That's all for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Joe. Broadcast and Video Production 2 students have created one-minute documentaries based on the 60-second doc series. Here is today's video created by Emma Yurick. 
My name is Alexa Lynch. I'm in 11th grade and I'm a dancer and choreographer at the Dance Alley. I dance because it's a sport I really enjoy. It's an art and you get to be creative and express yourself. I started dancing when I was five years old and my favorite styles are hip hop and contemporary. I'm doing seven dances this year. I'm choreographing three dances and one of them is my solo. Usually I just write everything down in my notes app on my phone just because I always have my phone with me so if inspiration strikes me I can just write it down but usually I spend about an hour or two at my dance studio by myself making the choreography. It's pretty difficult to balance dance, school work and I also have another job and finding time for friends so I usually on my calendar have every little thing written out and I basically stick to that schedule as best as I can. I wish to continue choreographing. I'm planning probably to go to college and maybe become a dance teacher and you know expand more on my learning. I really enjoy the sport itself and choreographing also is just making another art and learning to create art as well. Wondering what's on the menu today? Here's Quinlan Mulroy with What's Cooking. What's cooking, Latro? Cooking up in the main line is chicken with homemade fried rice and broccoli florets. In the main line tomorrow is nacho taco platter. In the grab and go bar, there's fresh salads and deli hoagies. The sandwich options are hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and chicken patties. The soup of the day is beef noodle. That's what's cooking. Thanks back to you. Bronco Marino is a multi sport athlete who is key to the success of the boys' volleyball team. Here's reporter Jacob Shawless with today's student spotlight. Rocco Marino is a 6'3 middle for the boys' volleyball team. With most of his athletic experience coming from hockey, Rocco had an unusual introduction to the sport of volleyball during his sophomore year. My sister plays volleyball, and she wore one of my hockey jackets to one of the guys' open gyms. And the coach said, do you play hockey? She's like, no, my brother does so. He's like, how tall is he? And at the time, I was 6'2". And he's like, get him in here. And I went to an open gym, and then from that, I just kind of fell in love with the sport. Although Rocco excels at the sport, some challenges still exist. I'd say the most difficult part of playing volleyball is getting a connection with your setter. That or blocking, but I think it's more of a connection with the setter. Though this year's team is strong, some improvements can be made to make the team even more of a playoff contender. So for this season, we definitely have the skill. Our hitters are amazing. We have good setting. We definitely could work on our passing more. I feel like that's our biggest downfall. You know, we don't get a good pass, can't get a good set. And so it all relies on that first pass. And I think if we work on that enough, we can go far in playoffs. Over the years, Rocco has shared some great memories with the rest of the team. Some of the best memories I had playing volleyball was just after home games, going to Donnie P's, and just, you know, having some fun with the guys. With his time at La Trobe coming to an end, Rocco has some clear plans for the future. My plans for the future are to attend St. Vincent and play hockey and volleyball while studying business management. Rocco's drive for success will surely stick with him into his collegiate athletic career. Now, here's Emily Sweeney with Wildcat World News. Good morning, Late Trobe. Today in World News, on Tuesday, the federal government laid out two options on how to prevent the Colorado River's depleted reservoirs from falling further from their already low levels. The stakes are the highest in California as it receives the largest share of water from the river. But the decision is critical for Nevada and Arizona as well. This decision has not been made yet, but when it has been, the water levels will be greatly affected for the next three years. Next up, Australia is expecting to have warm days, cool nights, and drier conditions, which increases the chance of massive bush bushfires to break out. Currently, the weather they've been experiencing is the exact opposite, consistent rainfall and steady temperatures. The Bureau of Meteorology says that all but one of the models they use to predict extreme weather says that this will take over Australia in August. And in local news, a proposal to remodel the Latrobe Amtrak station has been approved. It was decided on Monday that the work will be completed in phases to allow continuous use of the station by passengers throughout the construction. The next scheduled meeting to talk about progress is scheduled on April 24th. That's all for world and local news. Thanks and back to you. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of WCAT-TV News. Have a great day, Latrobe. We are GL. Go Wildcats.